thank you everybody for coming to our talk on a Friday afternoon, last day of KubeCon, for leveraging OCI 1.1 for enhanced SBOM integration and vulnerability scanning in Harbor. I'm here with my co-speaker, Shang Wen Yu. My name is Anais Orlis. I'm jumping in for Teppe, who can sadly not be here today due to family commitments. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you all in this group confession. My name is Shang Wen Yu, a software engineer from Broadcom. I've been in the cloud computing industry for about three years now, and currently I am a maintainer of the Harbor project. And uh, my daily work includes release management of the Harbor project and Harbor OSS and uh, issue charge and PR review in the, of both of them and Jenkins pipeline maintenance, also bug fixing. And I'm really honored and thrilled to be here and I can't wait to share with you the topic of leverage OSS back 1.1 for enhanced s uh, integration and vulnerability scanning. Awesome. So this talk was originally submitted as well by Tepe Fukuda, who's working with me on the open source team at Aqua Security. Now, he's the person who created Trivi originally, which will be used as well during this talk. Now, I'm an open source developer advocate at Aqua Security and closely working with Tepe and on Trivi. Now, for the agenda, for those who are also watching the recording, uh, this is what will be covered in this talk. First, a little bit of an introduction and background on what are SBOMs, why do we even need SBOMs. Then we will look at the OCI spec version 1.1, as well as their referrer API. We will look at the SBOM integration in Harbor, and the Harbor plug pluggable scanner spec version 1.2, as well as how we integrate it in Harbor scanner trivia integration we will have a live demo and hopefully lots of time for Q&A. All right, and I'm just curious, like how many of you have heard of Harbor? Please raise your hand. Cool, nice. And uh, how many of you have regularly or occasionally used Harbor um, as a public registry for your company or for yourself to serve images? Cool. Like, for those of you who are not familiar with it, Harbor is a CNCF graduate project with more than 22,000 starts and uh, around 2.5 thousand forks in GitHub. And uh, Harbor is also an open source registry uh, that allows users to, um, to uh, with role-based access to pull and proof images. And uh, our mission is to be the cloud Crafted, uh, is to be the crafted uh, cloud native re repository for Kubernetes. Awesome. Who has heard of Trivi before? Who here uses Trivi without Harbor? Who here uses Trivi in Harbor? Awesome. So maybe after this talk, more people are going to use Trivi within Harbor. So Trivi is an all in one cloud native open source security scanner. It has lots and lots of different functionality, but in this talk specifically, we are going to focus on vulnerability scanning and SBOM generation. Now, we've just crossed 20,000 stars about a month ago, so if you use Trivi, we would highly appreciate a star. Same with Harbor. As mentioned, Tepe was the one who started. Trivi uh, was originally just a vulnerability scanner for container images. You can find more on the Trivi.dev website. Also, if you want to connect with Tepe, then the Trivi GitHub repository is probably the best place. Now, getting started with SBOMs, since that's going to be a common theme and common component in this talk, what are actually SBOMs? Who is using SBOMs on a day-to-day -day basis? Okay, a few people. So SBOM stands for Software Bill of Materials, and it basically allows you to generate an inventory list of a resource. Now that resource could be a container image, it could be a file system, and the SBOM basically details all of the libraries, all of the components used within that container image. So while the container image has several different layers, the SBOM exposes all of the components within each layer. Now, Usually, when we talk about incidents, uh, security issues, we talk about how we can make our services more observable. We don't necessarily talk about what can we do to prepare for security incidents. Now, one of the things that organizations can do is generate SBOMs. SBOMs allow you to easily identify what resources you use. So in the case there are new vulnerabilities released, you can easily identify if you are affected by those vulnerabilities. The 
overall average uh, cost per incident per year increases each year. And organizations have to find new ways to minimize the impact of these incidents. Now, SBOMs are also enforced by, for example, the White House executive order uh, that any organization that works with, like, on a national basis has to generate SBOMs for their software. Now, SBOMs can be pushed to OCI registries, similar to how you can push container images, Helm charts, signatures for your container image, or attestations. Attestations are basically claims that you make of your resources. All of that can be pushed to container or to registries, to OCI compliant registries. And basically, the OCI framework allows you, the OCI specification allows you to push all of these different artifacts to any registry. So you can interact with all of the registry in a similar way. Now, this is how an SBOM could look like. This is an SPDX SBOM. Another popular format is Cyclone DX. You could generate both with Trivi. SBOMs are not supposed to be human readable. You are not supposed to go into the SPDX JSON file and actually read your SBOM. The SBOM is supposed to be used in combination with your other resources, such as container images, to understand what's going on within. Now, you could push the SBOM to other OCI registries. The thing is, if your registry is, uses OCI version 1.0, or lesser, then you cannot correlate resources, meaning you might have lots of SBOMs, lots of container images, signatures, but you can't actually attach them to each other. For that, you will need OCI version 1.1. And OCI version 1.1 has the Refer API. The Refer API allows you to do this. Basically, you can have, for example, a container image, you can sign the container image, push that also alongside the container image to the registry, attach an attestation, a claim that you make about your container image, you can attach the SBOM, and so forth. So you basically have a tree of dependencies of your different resources. Now, if you want to learn more about OCI spec version 1.1 and the Refer API, here are two really great talks that I highly suggest you to check out. All right, let's uh, move to the section of SBOM integration in Harbor. Firstly, we will cover one concept called accessory. Then we will talk about two methods to associate a SBOM files into an, uh, to an artifact in Harbor. One of them is to manually push an SBOM file using third-party CRI tools such as Trivi and Aorus. And the other way is to automatically generate a SBOM and associate it to an artifact on image pushed to Harbor. Then we will have like uh, one planned feature, which is scanning a SBOM for vulnerabilities instead of scanning the artifact itself for vulnerabilities. What is an accessory? An accessory is just like an ordinary OCI artifact, but linked to a subject artifact via the subject descriptor. In Harbor, we have an artifact um, accessory table storing the relationship between the subject artifact and the accessory. The, the mapping between the accessory and its subject artifact is N21, which means multiple accessories can be attached to one single subject artifact, and as we can see on the right side of this page. Well, you may have questions like why we need accessories. Accessories extends Harbor's capabilities of storing extra data, such as SBOM and the signature information, like cosine and the notation. And it is also the way how Harbor incorporates OCI spec 1.1 and the reference API. And uh, how about the lifecycle management of accessory? It can be deleted independently in the Harbor Portal web UI, and it will be garbage, collect, garbage collected along with its subject artifact. When a user triggers, when a user triggers a replication job, if there is any accessories in the source test, in the source registry, it will be replicated to the destination registry together with its subject artifact. This page contains the command to generate an SBOM file using Trivi, and it also shows us how to manually associate an SBOM to an artifact using Trivi or Aorus. This is what it looks like on the Hubble web portal after manually associating an SBOM 
file to an artifact, please note that the type of the accessory that are manually associated to the artifact is subject.accessory. And uh, we can also display a tree view of the relationship between the accessories and its subject artifact using Aura's CRI. Then, like how to automatically generate an S bomb and associate it to a subject artifact. Uh, we can do that, um, go to the project configuration tab and select the automatically generate S bomb on push checkbox and then click the save button. After that, we can docker push an image to this project that was configured previously, and we can see there is an S bomb generate, automatically generated as an accessory to this uh, RPAM image. And we please know that the type of this automatically generated S bomb is S .S -bomb instead of um, the accessory, subject that accessory. We have one planned feature, which is scanning a spam for vulnerabilities. This feature is uh, uh, this feature plan. This feature will be configure will, will be designed to be configurable via the system settings, and it is it it is it scans the spam automatically generated by the Hubble built in trivia adapter. So for those spams that are manually attached to artifacts in Hubble will not be scanned. If there's no such an automatically generated as bomb present, then it will fall back to the fall back to subject uh, to scan the subject artifact itself. By having the feature of uh, by having the feature of scanning as bomb for vulnerabilities, it will eliminate the procedure of uh, repeated this um, repeatedly, repeatedly analyzing the container images and uh, uh, making the scanning process much more efficient. In addition to that, it also provides us with um, a comprehensive, with a comprehensive visibility. Next, let's move to the section of Harbor Plugboard Scanner Spec 1.1. Essentially, there are three APIs defined in the Hubble Pluggable scan, Scanner API. The first one is the get metadata, and the second one is post scan, and the third one is get the scan report. After sending the request to the metadata API, it will return a JSON string containing the scanner information, such as the scanner, uh, scanner name, the vendor and the scanner version, and it also contains the capability info and the properties info we can see in the next slides. On the right, on left hand side is the probabilities info. We can see that there is there are a bunch of like environment variables returned by the scanners. And on the right hand side is the capabilities info. Essentially it tells us what the scanner is capable of. In this case, the scanner is capable of uh, doing, uh, doing vulnerability scanning and uh, S bomb generation. These capabilities are filled if to make sure that Harbor and the scanner are on the same page. When, post, uh, when posting a uh, a request to the scan API. It requires some kind of payload. In this payload, we can specify the uh, registry information, the artifact information, and the values for enabled capabilities. These enabled capabilities essentially to tell the, to ask the scanners what to, exactly what to do. In this case, Harbor is asking the scanner to generate an S bomb in SPDX format. If everything goes well, then a 202 
will be returned as a scan response, along with a scan request ID. And this request ID will be used to retrieve the scan report, which we will see in the next steps. In case of anything going wrong, then different error code will be returned based on different scenarios. Um, a scan request ID is required to get a scan report. And uh, if we, we also need to specify the S4 media type in the query path as a parameter to get, a, to get an S4 report. The value, for, the value of accept the header to get a, a vulnerability report mm -hmm. Or, or the value of accept header to get the availability report is different from the one to get the report of the SBOM generation. And this is the response to the request of getting an SBOM report. And we can see that the SBOM data is wrapped into the SBOM field and the media type field tells us the SBOM, the SBOM is, a, is in SPDX format. So as you can see, most of the work has actually been done within Harbor as part of the pluggable scanner spec version 1.2. So Trivi itself can't directly communicate with Harbor. It doesn't know about the pluggable scanner spec by itself. For that, it needs the Harbor scanner Trivi integration that we have written in addition. And that basically implements the APIs that you have just seen. So basically, the Harbor scanner Trivi is implementing the pluggable, the pluggable scanner spec version 1.2. And that makes it possible for Harbor to basically request uh, from the Harbor Scanner Trivi, hey, what capabilities do you have? What can you actually do for me? And it's basically then able to translate the Harbor Scanning API into Trivi commands. So it then is able to serve uh, Trivi functionality to Harbor and say, here's actually what I'm, what I'm able to do. I can generate SBOMs for you, or I can perform vulnerability scanning. So let's see how that works in action. So I'm here just in a normal Ubuntu VM where I have uh, Harbor installed and running. So we can go to my UI, and here's just my Harbor. Does it work? No? Yeah, good. Here's just my Harbor interface. Uh, if you've used Harbor before, this will probably look very familiar to you. Now, for those who are new to Harbor, here are basically my different uh, projects, and projects correspond to, if you're familiar in Docker Hub, with user IDs. So for example, in Docker Hub, my user ID would be Anais Orlis, versus here I can set up my project names. So I'm gonna set up a new project name, gonna call it Dev2, set that up, and I can go into my new project. As you can see, there are no resources yet. I haven't pushed anything yet to my Dev2 project. Now, what I want to do first is, as detailed before on a screenshot, I want to set up automatic S-bomb generation when I push a new artifact, because that makes my life a lot easier if Harbor just does it for me instead of me having to care whether my container images have S-bomb. Again, if you don't have a registry, if you don't use a registry with the latest OCI spec, then you cannot correlate container images to S-bombs, they will be separate and you would have to make the connection manually. Now, if we have an S-bomb attached to our container image, then in a security scanner such as Trivi can use the S-bomb instead of the container image for scanning, so it doesn't have to, as mentioned, analyze the separate layers that we have in our container images. Now, I'm gonna be very boring and I'm gonna copy paste commands because my hands are very shaky when I'm presenting. So here we're gonna first pull a new uh, container image. This is just gonna pull from Docker Hub. Um, and if I now do Docker image ls, 
I can see here's my new container image that I just pulled. Now I can go ahead and directly push it to Harbor. I first have to re-tag it to tell it actually now instead of Docker Hub where I got you from, you need to use uh, Harbor instead. So we're gonna re-tag that. As you can see here, we are gonna use the new project that I've just created in Harbor. Once we have re-tagged it, we can go ahead and we can push it to our Harbor instance. Cool. Now this should be in Harbor now. So if I go back to my projects, I go to my Dev2 project, and refresh, it's not here. It's the access repository. Ah, I have to log in first. Um, Oh, I didn't do that. Okay. Um, uh, Docker login, right? Is that how you? Okay. Um, uh, oh, my yeah, admin. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Let's do it again. One second. Live demos, huh? Oh, yeah, now you see my password. Great. <laughs> One second, again, as I said, nervous. Okay, cool. Let's push our container image again. Now that we've done that. Okay, so we, here we have the digest, 2628. We can refresh. And here we have our container image, our Alpine container image, and within here, it already performed the vulnerability scan. Yeah, just checking that I'm in the right project. It already performed the vulnerability scan, and here I have the, the image digest, 2628. Two, Why is there no? No, I did it exactly like I did it before. One second. Let's go back to the configuration. See, it's, it worked exactly before. See, I've enabled it. Maybe because I logged in again. See? No. It's not showing this time. Oh. <laughs> we have a little hiccup. So usually you would see right here uh, your your uh, S bomb attached, which it worked exactly. It worked every time we did it before in the live demo. Now this time it doesn't want to uh, work. So let's we try that. Let's we save this. Going back to our project. And then maybe let's just delete it and we push it again. Good thing we have time. For, for the new project, maybe? A new project? Let's, let's try to push it first again. Let's go here in it. No, it doesn't want to generate it. Okay, let's try a new project. <laughs> Three. Yeah. Let's go into the new project. Configurations. Automatically generate the SBOM, save. Let's go back to our projects. Let's push it to Dev3. Oh, the tag. Docker tag. Okay. Go into death three. Okay. Good thing you can also manually push an S bomb, generate an S bomb and push it. So that's what we're going to do next, which I wanted to show you anyways. So we are going to generate a new S bomb. 
for SPDX.json for our Alpine image, and we're going to push that to Harbor. So here we have our new Alpine SPDX.json. Now, as you can see, you wouldn't necessarily read it uh, through the SBOM yourself. You would push it to your container registry, which we're going to do next. And we do that with the Trivi Referrer plugin. Now, how Trivi works, we have several different plugins which expand upon the core Trivi functionality. You can generate your own plugins as well. This plugin is specifically written for you to interact with OCI registries and look at all of the, for example, accessories, 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 accessories <laughs> that uh, in uh, Harbor, you can use the Trivi Referrer plugin for that. So we're gonna put our S bump to it. And nothing wants to work this time. Error for getting image error getting used right there. Oh, because I have to retag it. One second. Let's put it into our Harbor registry. Okay, Success successfully pushed the referrer. Let's go back to our registry and refresh. Let's look at the Alpine container image, and now we can see here is the SBOM that we have manually pushed. Now, obviously, this would be different. This would say Harbor SBOM if it was automated. I'm not sure why it doesn't work this time. I literally did the live demo three times this morning. <laughs> so, let's, should we try one more time? Would you want to try? Maybe it's my hand, maybe I did something. <laughs> Yeah, we like uh, we did a pre preparation on this demo. Yesterday it worked perfectly. I'm not sure what happened, and uh, yeah, but essentially the the, the automatically the SBOM, yeah, SBOM generation and and the association should be um, should be work should be working fine in the in in, in the Harbor project. And if it's not, uh, if it's not in the latest uh, latest Hubble release yet, it is. Uh, it will be available in Hubble Hubble one uh, two dot eleven dot zero, which is our next uh, minor version. So, stay tuned. Should we try one more time? We have. Oh well, we are close to time. Um, yeah. Not sure why it doesn't work this time. One more time. Let's delete it. Let's delete our specific container image and go ahead and, not this one, and push it again. Come on, Harbor. Maybe it just takes some time. Maybe it's the conference Wi-Fi versus. Yeah, we can just wait for the just wait for the wait, wait, waiting for our release of Harbor two thousand eleven. It should be <laughs> it should we should be available there. Awesome. We will publish a working life a working demo later on. Um, but ultimately, how it would look like is on the screenshot. Uh, you would have instead of the uh, accessory, you would you would have harbor.sbom uh, written there, so you know it's the automated version. Now, here you can find additional resources, also the discussion to Harbor. So if you're interested in the latest development in Harbor, get involved there. Uh, give us feedback. Give them feedback on the the UX and just your use cases as well. And if you have any questions, once you try it out yourself, uh, also reach out in the CNCF Slack channel on Harbor, and we also have an Aqua Security open source Slack where you can reach out to the Trivi maintainers. Now, we would highly appreciate your feedback of this talk. We have some time for Q&A, uh, but if you could leave some feedback, that would be amazing as well. Thank you. If you have any questions, there are two mics in the middle of the room on each side. And what's up with you this morning? What happened? 
Is there anything in the... I didn't do anything. No. I did it, I did three runs this morning. Three times this morning? I did it three times this morning. So I have a quick question. Um, so I'm, uh, we don't use OCI images yet, uh, but I'm thinking of using them for uh, configuration. So not container images, but just uh, Kubernetes configuration. Uh, I'm also not very familiar with SBOMs. Um, would I use an SBOM for a, an OCI image where I've pushed just YAML configuration? Would that be useful at all? Uh, essentially, like you can you can associate any files to the hardware artifact using a uh, client like a trivia and Aureus, and uh, and these files will be attached to the uh, will be saved in the hardware uh, red repository as an uh, accessory. Yes. But for just to clarify, for YAML, just for your YAML manifests, you wouldn't generate an SBOM. The SBOM is, for example, for your file system, for your source code to know. Uh, as you, for example, ship release, you could tell people here are all the libraries used within. Uh, so that's that would be more the use case for an SBOM. Or, for example, you would attach the SBOM, provide that on your container registry if your images are used by third parties. So um, you wouldn't directly. Uh, you wouldn't use it for your configuration files. Thank, Thank you. you. So, uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I'm curious uh, whether there's something planned regarding vaccinating or like implementing uh, vaccinating for SBOM there on Haba. Uh, because I think yesterday it was a presentation about uh, vaccinating images and like getting rid of specific um, vulnerabilities, for example. like. Um, which you can basically ignore them if they're not relevant for the uh, service that you're building. Something like that planned as well for Harbor? Is there plans for BEX documents in yeah, Harbor? Yeah, BEX documents. For plans. BEX. You know, BEX vulnerability exchange, exploit exchange? Uh, any, actually, like, uh, like any like, uh, files or data can be associated, uh, could be, like, could be associated to an artifact in Harbor like that, and uh... so, for example, if I'm company A and I have, uh, I'm providing the container images with S bombs on whatever God knows what in my registry, and people are using it, I it's on the vendors where you're using or on you where you're using um, the where you're pulling the container images from. For example, if you pull third-party images, you scan them before you push them to your own registry, Harbor in that case, yeah. you could also pull their VEX documents, put them into Harbor in the same way. It's just on you to basically pull and push the, 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 um, the documents, the resources, so it's, or for you to, to then do something with it, or for the vendors, your vendors, to provide them to you, those specs documents. Yeah, so we are building our own images and then pushing them to Harbor to just mm. fetch them then, uh, and so we would need to create these documents on your own, but uh, yeah. You could create an issue, for example, for the pluggable uh, scanner spec in sure. that it also supports, right now, Trivi supports um, SBOM mm. and, and generation and vulnerability scanning, but uh, Trivi itself can use VEX for file systems and container images, mm -hmm. so you could uh, put an issue in with a, yeah, with a request for that, for that additional support. That would be sure. an option, so you can more automate it with Trivi as well. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>